When the moon hangs high in the midnight sky Like a cat's claw scratching down And the wolves, they do howl For they smell something foul Mr. Whiskers has come to town He trundles out of the dark Looking for a lark You better pray you don't catch his eye For when he is done having his fun You just might wish you could die <laughs> My creepy kitties, it is I, your host, Mr. Whiskers the Mad Catter, and I'm here to bring you, well, not an episode of Twisted Tea Time, not yet at least. See, this, this first weekend of February 2018 holds the one day a year I do not get to celebrate my unbirthday. As such, I have made myself quite the busy little boogeyman. After traveling to a faraway land to visit a dear friend of mine, I plan to return home to celebrate as only the Mad Catter can. After which, I should be able to rededicate myself to Twisted Tea Time and return to regular updates. Now, you longtime listeners may recall the first episode of Twisted Tea Time, or at least the revised version, wherein I told the story of Arya and Professor Treble and how the latter travels the world, stealing the sound from people's ears for the former. Then you might recall another tale of a carpenter and his daughter, and how through fate and folly, she became the Whisperer of Nightmares. Well, tonight I present you the third entry into the Book of Boogeyman, or the Boogie Book, as it were, wherein you shall hear the tale of Mr. Twist. The Tale of Mr. Twist by Z.P. Gowdy Once upon a time there was a boy who bore a twisted face. He never once owned a toy for his home was a twisted place. He grew so very large and strong, his folks did attempt to hide. Their freakish boy, so garish and wrong, he died at birth, they'd often lied. So they kept him out of sight, in the basement cramped and small. He never got to see daylight just dancing shadows on the wall. The shadows danced, the shadows sang, and wove him tales of dark delight. They sung stories of beasts of flesh and fang, and whispered of freedom from his plight. The only ones who showed him love were his little brother and sister who'd always play nice and never shove, and made sure to call him Mr. Then one day as they did play, their parents, mean and cruel, came home in a huff and said, Enough! You have broken some sort of rule. What rule they broke, they never did say, but their anger was written plain. The siblings were punished in every way, but the greatest involved pain. Cruel punishment was no stranger to that basement-dwelling boy, but to know his siblings to be in danger was a thought he'd not employ. Their cries of pain did fuel his rage, and so great was his strength. The twisted boy escaped his cage, with a chain of some length. The violence that was seen that night is the stuff which poems are made. The twisted boy did beat and bite. From their parents the siblings were saved. During the fight a fire was lit. Throughout the house it spread. The siblings did escape from it, but the parents were burned dead. 
Of the twisted boy there was no trace. Perhaps it was best for him to hide, for he was suspect in a murder case. So his destination he did not confide. He traveled far, he traveled at night, under the cover of dark. His company was the pale moonlight, and those shadows drawn and stark. Desperate for a home was he, and his siblings were sorely missed. Was this how his life would be? Was this how he would exist? The dancing shadows, his oldest friend, did whisper to the boy now grown, Come join us and you'll have no end. You shall never again be alone. We know children you can protect, brothers and sisters who do play. And should you agree and not object, you'll even get to see the light of day. To this the boy, now grown, agreed to have a childhood forever. So to their embrace he did concede, ready for this new endeavor. Now to children only he appears, joining in their fun and games. Though once he happens to see tears, his rage goes up in flames. So wear you parents how you treat your children when you're pissed, lest their angry imaginary friend you meet, the invisible Mr. Twist. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, kitties! I do hope you enjoyed that short little poem. Suffice to say, not all imaginary friends are ghosts, and some really do want what's best for their friends. It just sometimes turns out that what they think is best might not involve the parents. Now, that is all the time we have for tonight. So tuck yourself in and be sure to sleep tight. For soon the morning will come, I fear, and your nightmares and dreams will disappear until you next lay yourself down at night and prepare for an evening of frightful delight. Good night, my creepy kitties, and pleasant dreams.